I'm Michelle Avis. Hello, everyone. I'm Peter Coombs. We're the instructors of the Essential Rainwater Harvesting online course, and today we're answering your questions. Today's question is, how complicated is a safely designed home-scale rainwater harvesting system for drinking water supply? Do I need things like aeration and UV filtration? Um, and what can I expect the cost to be? That's a big question, Michelle. Yeah, I know, so, we gotta keep it to five minutes. What's the five minute answer? <laughs> wow, it's a, the elevator pitch. Um, um, I'm actually talking to you from a house that operates in a, in a Docklands area of, a, of Australia's second biggest harbour, um, dense inner city urban area with um, industrial, with an industrial fringe around your a classic, very busy Docklands area. And next to the, in this house, the whole house is supplied by rainwater and has done for over 20 years. We don't have a first flush device. We don't have aeration. We, we don't have any of these whiz bang things that people attempt to sell you. And this house has been a research site for years. So journal papers in, in peer reviewed scientific literature have been written about the performance of this house over the last 20 years. Um, and myself and my family are quite healthy. Some, some might disagree, but so what's going on here? So we do have a well-designed and carefully thought out rainwater treatment train. And ironically, it operates better and more safely by not having all these extra devices and products in it and by leaving it alone. So why is that? So first of all, we, we have the roof system um, because it's a roof harvested system, 99.999% um, of the potential sources of pathogens are just not available to us in spite of what you will see in the literature. So it's a, key, a key source of harmful cryptosporidium to humans are calves. So there are no calves defecating on my roof, for example. So, um, and there are no humans either, which is the rest of the um, indirect or direct contaminant source for pathogens. But there are chemicals and other things going on. What happens is, yes, the roof collects these things, say bird poo. I mean, bird poo is a secondary source of potential secondary pathogens, which we can talk about in the course. Um, but things that might be harmful are actually uh, roofs also have the effect of collecting and also redistributing because of their structure and their access to um, sunlight and drying and wind. Um, so not everything that remains on a roof um, becomes available in your rainwater storage. Your rainwater treatment train, which might have a leaf diverter, which we do have, which are very effective, um, and we're removing sediments, which can be a, a transporter, assist transporter contaminants into your rainwater storage. Um, and then um, and then in the st storage itself, your tank is a bioreactor. So the sludge on the bottom is actually a biofilm that actually removes contaminants from your water supply. So, and in this house, um, then we have a pump. Within each pump, you have, have a very fine screen and we have fine screens on the inlets and outlets. So nothing can crawl into our rainwater storage, so there's no vector of uh, contaminating the water. So lizards and frogs and so on. Possums. And then, <laughs> uh, possums, squirrels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then at the other end, we, um, our research has found that pressure in pumps actually cuts down bacteria. And there's a few screens, inlets to pumps, inlets to your storages, so you're reducing 
and the settlement and natural bioreaction processes in, in the tank are reducing the other potential contaminants. In, inflows to rainwater, in spite of what's been written, are, are relatively clean. Uh, the tanks, the tank bioreactor, the storage bioreactor is actually very good at polishing that. And then by the time you're passing through your pump and your mesh screen that's involved in your pump um, until your, your outlet, um, you've actually got, you got stages in the improved water quality all through your system. So, and at this house, we have a, an under sink filter on the drinking water tap, because we don't, that sort of filtration is not required anywhere else. And it's, level of filtration is 0.1 microns, but it's got activated carbon and a, and, and a, and a 0.1 micron membrane in it. So that, that actually produces very good quality water um, in this house and has done so for 20 years. So it wasn't that expensive to set that up. Yeah, that was gonna be my next question. What do you figure? Um, we're mindful we set this up a long time ago. Um, in Australian dollars, the entire system cost us something like $5,000 to set up. Um, and that'd be the same in Canadian dollars, 5,000. Yeah. yeah um, and the under sink filter has changed every year and the manufacturer sends us a little reminder once a year saying, hey guys, you, can, you need to change the thing um, and it costs us so much a year. Um, so we replace it every year. We're very diligent with doing that. And, and that's about it for us. Um, I should be cleaning out the, um, the leaf diverter and the gutters more than I do. But, um, one of my colleagues offered me some gutter mesh because I'm very slack at maintaining my own house. And we installed some gutter mesh on our gutters so I don't have to clean out our, our roof gutters anymore. So that's helped immensely in the last few years as well. And that's about all that we're doing. I'm sorry, I've used my, my own house as an example, but it wasn't really that hard. It was just common sense. That's great. Thank you very much, Peter. Mm -hmm.